Let's get more on the blast in Ankara. Yudan Ibet is the director of the Center for Security Studies at Bacheshire University, and she joins us now on the phone. Gunnar, thank you very much for joining us. Now, the explosion that occurred uh, during rush hour in uh, Ankara uh, was apparently 300 meters away from a military complex. Do you think it's fair to say that uh, this could have been the target? Um, well, that's really difficult to speculate at the moment, but the target was definitely military because it was intended uh, for uh, the service buses of the military. So it was a military target, and uh, whether you know it was specifically aimed at the service buses or intending to um, uh, do some damage to the military complex nearby, it's, it's difficult to say, but definitely we can say the target was military. All right, Gunnar, help our viewers understand, how does this explosion, uh, which happened earlier today, differ from that of the explosion, the, uh, the deadliest explosion in Turkey's history uh, that happened on October 11th that killed over 100 people? In because that happened during a peace rally, and now we're saying this could be, um, in terms of a target, a military complex. How does this uh, attack differ from the one that happened in October? Yeah, and also, you know, we had the uh, ISIS-related attack in Sultan Ahmed as well. So this, I think, is different from all of those in the sense that, you know, ISIS had uh, targeted for the very first time uh, tourist areas uh, with the Sultan Ahmed bombing. And before that, when it was uh, ISIS targets, it was um, rallies that were predominantly dominated by um, Kurd Kurds or left-wing activists that ISIS see as associated with the YPG that they're fighting in Syria. Uh, now, uh, if it's the PKK, on the other hand, they have not really brought their uh, assaults into the major Turkish cities. They have really confined their attacks on the military in the southeast. So when we think of military targets, the PKK are the only ones to target the military, uh, as opposed to ISIS. But then the PKK have never targeted the military uh, in major Turkish cities before. So it, it, whoever has done it, it's actually a very... Uh, new uh, direction in the terror threat that Turkey faces right now. Of course, uh, this attack that happened earlier on uh, Wednesday comes after Turkey's president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, said that they would continue shelling YPG targets, which Turkey says has direct links with the PKK in northern Syria, saying it's a matter of national security. So could mm -hmm. there be a correlation here? Yes, I mean, that's another thing that, you know, uh, one immediately thinks about, the correlation of what's happened here to Syria, because Turkey is quite serious about the national security concern uh, emanating from the YPG, and they're very concerned about this corridor in Syria narrowing and therefore creating a geographically contiguous zone um, across the border. Uh, but. On the other hand, um, we, we see a sort of increased Turkish activity short of going across the border, uh, such as you mentioned, the shelling that's been going on for a while. Uh, but also today we've learned that there's some new air defense systems that have been deployed in the area as well. So um, whether this is an attack that is, has some kind of relation to that, and we know that the YPG and the PKK do work together, it's difficult to speculate. But on the other hand, we're getting reports that this is um, a, a vehicle, explosive vehicle, that caused this. It's not the PKK style to use explosive vehicles. They usually use roadside bombs. So, again, you know, this has left lots of question marks. All right. Um, Gunnar, tell us, uh, what does this mean about the security situation in Turkey right now? Well, I think, you know, the security situation is going to be heightened, particularly in uh, military areas, military complexes, uh, because now we're seeing a new dimension uh, in the Turkey's multidimensional war on terror, uh, including it, what, what, you know, it's facing a two-front war on terror with the PKK and Daesh. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, military installations will come under uh, greater uh, security. Uh, and more uh, vigilance and awareness uh, after this, because obviously they are now becoming a target in the main cities. This is new. This has never happened before. 
Let's talk about this multi-dimensional effort that uh, Turkey's mm -hmm. security forces uh, have conducted against terror organizations. We saw uh, the attacks in Sultanahmet, where Daesh claimed responsibility. Um, a, a popular tourist destination spot in Istanbul was targeted. Um, mm -hmm. Then you had the attacks in, in Ankara. How is Turkey going to? Uh, is Turkey going to be able to 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 deal with this uh, multi-pronged effort against uh, terror? Well, Turkey's been dealing with terror for a long time, so I think that's one of the things that, you know, uh, you can look at and say that, you know, they have actually been, security forces have been quite adaptable in the past, if you look over the past 30 years, to various different uh, terrorist threats, and they have been dealing with terrorism for a very long time. Uh, but I think, you know, as new kinds of terror emerge, this is not just something that Turkey faces, but it's, it's a much more global, wide problem. I mean, if you look at ISIS-related terror, these are virtual cells, which is a new thing for all of us to deal with. But with Turkey, I think, you know, Turkey faces its own very specific problems with regard to terror, uh, particularly when you think about the situation in Syria, uh, how the situation is going to develop there with the YPG and the YPG's links to the PKK. I think this is the crucial area uh, where Turkey will have to... Um, you know, find new counterterrorism measures, if you like, mm -hmm. um, and uh, this go it's uh, it's going to be tough, obviously, because uh, it's it's a, it's very close uh, to home in many ways. Uh, but lots of countries have dealt with this kind of terror for a long time, um, and you know we have a lot to learn from each other as well. So it's not, I don't think it's a problem unique to Turkey. All right, just to I'm going to keep you on the telephone, but just to remind our viewers that uh, a blast occurred in the, in Tur in the Turkish capital uh, earlier on Wednesday. Uh, according to the governor of Ankara, five people are confirmed dead and 10 injured in an attack uh, on a military transport by uh, a suspected bomb-laden vehicle. That's according to the governor of Ankara. Gunda, I want to ask you, uh, yes, we don't know who it is. But yeah. could this explosion strengthen President Erdogan's hand, especially after coming uh, after today's comments where he accused uh, some coalition partners? Hello? You know, I bet, can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can hear you. I, uh, I just lost the end of the trail of your sentence. Let me, let me repeat my question. Yeah. Uh, when you look at today's explosion, do you think that this could uh, strengthen President Erdogan's hand, especially uh, after the comments he made today accusing some coalition partners uh, in their relationship with the YPG? Uh, to some extent, yes, um, because, uh, you know, this is, uh, Turkey's been saying that it's facing a serious national security threat. Uh, and some uh, coalition members have not been uh, taking this on board as much as they should. Uh, and I think, you know, this is a, uh, you know, a very strong manifestation of the kind of serious national security threat that Turkey faces. Uh, so, yes, in that sense, you know, if, if you, and I'm sure, you know, Turkey's allies will uh, look at the broader picture uh, in a much more earnest way after this attack and look at the serious security threat that Turkey faces, because after all, it's a NATO country. So its security uh, is vitally important for all the other allies as well. Okay, uh, I'd just like to uh, inform our viewers that Turkey's Prime Minister Ahmed Davutoglu has canceled a planned trip to Brussels uh, and would be staying in the country, uh, obviously, with regards to this attack. Now, um, coming back to you, Gülner, um, now we've seen for months uh, the Turkish security forces battle PKK terrorists in provinces like Diyarbakir in the Sur district, as well as in yeah. Shunak and Jizre. Um, obviously, one is... Um, you, you mentioned that there was a change in tactic by the PKK, bringing their their uh, their warfare into more urban areas. Do you think yes, that th right. this this actually is a new chapter in this? Yes, I and mean, we don't know though if it's the PKK behind it. That's the other thing. Uh, but if it is, then yes, this is a this is an entirely new chapter because, uh, like I said, you know, they uh, the military have. Uh, 
traditionally been targeted by the PKK, not ISIS. Uh, but the PKK, first of all, have not used explosive vehicles before. They've used roadside bombs. They've used uh, attacks uh, with, with their own guerrillas, but never sort of explosive vehicles of this kind. Uh, and uh, they've never taken the, uh, the conflict into the major cities before, especially against military targets in the major cities before. So this would be an entire new uh, tactic for them. And uh, you know, if it is them, then we can definitely link it to uh, some kind of relation with the YPG and what's going on in Syria, and hence the need for a new tactic. But I think it's too early to talk about that, because until we know who's behind the attack, I mean, this is just a speculation as to what, mm -hmm. uh, you know, indeed, uh, might indeed. be. Yeah. All right, uh, Gunnar Aybet, the director of the Center for Security Studies at Bacheshir University. We thank you for joining us and for that analysis. Thank <laughs> you.